We're the Decameron Collective, nine Canadian feminist artists and digital humanities scholars who began meeting weekly over Zoom in March of 2020 in what has become a sustained, slow practice of inquiry grounded in care. In this project showcase of our work, Memory Eternal, we will explore the work's forms and themes and start to contextualize the work within intersecting frames. Designed for Oculus Quest 2 and premiered at the ELO Media Art Festival in 2023, Memory Eternal takes immersions on a journey of grieving, spanning personal, collective, and planetary scales. Named for the Ukrainian Orthodox Prayer for the Dead, Memory Eternal explores trauma and remembrance, asking what do we remember and how? Memory Eternal is a digital sandbox made up of 17 distinct audio, textual, and visual storytelling works set in a dreamlike starry landscape where uncanny physics and scale dislocates and denaturalizes our perceptions of the world. Navigating through this landscape encircled by water, designed to recall the Greek underworld rivers of forgetting, lamentation, and sorrow, provides an opportunity to think about memory and mourning as a form of cyclical journeying. Immersants enter dark spaces, sit with grief, and emerge on the other side. The project grew from and documents the truncated, abrupt, deformed experiences of loss that the collective experienced in the early 2020s. The VR world thus functions as both a creative record of the pandemic and a reconciliation with the new world through the creation of an imaginary immersive land. For those of us who did not have the time to grieve, there will come a time. For those of us who did not have the time to grieve, who could not sit with emotion, the work is dialogic in the Bactinian sense, open-ended, non-hierarchical, and non-linear by design. The heterogeneity of the works and their intention takes its cue from Eastern European polyphonic choral arrangements, where the voices each occupy a carefully arranged, complicated harmony and meld into a multi-layered sound. There's no lead vocal, no voiceover narrator, but rather a unifying casting of voices to fill the sound waves in tonality and totality. The work's complexity rests in the way it holds in balance the various ways that grief and mourning are felt and enacted. It's quiet and noisy, angry and compassionate, grounding and disorienting. It's a world that holds multiple, sometimes opposing experiences, whose valence shifts as the immersant explores its propensity for documentary or invention. By Angela Yosa. Crumple that sadness for just a moment. Just a moment. Please. This is just it. A thread of orange begins to form together on some works use complex interactive forms or transparencies and overlays while others are deliberately bare. Some are expressly and intimately dialogic. Some work through hauntings, integrating found material from lost people. Analog forms anchor the time space that AI generation disrupts. Exploring the world, the immersant encounters an archaeology of media. There's text, drawings, photography, cell phone video, sky cam, kaleidoscopes, animations, 360 video, and AI-generated imagery, each which carries personal and collective memory in different ways. The work articulates a collective resistance to forgetting through a commemoration of something we each wanted to remember. Each work is a wish and a promise that we will not forget what was lost over the course of the pandemic. People we loved, friendships, ideals, values, and dreams, hopes, security and the toll that such crises extract from communities and the earth. Many of the works in Memory Eternal operate at an intimate scale, landing hard in the territory of eulogy. As a living anarchive, the VR world keeps the ideas and expressions of our dead alive. Works like Threads and Requiem for Damon, Laura, and Baker integrate live musical performances from the people they eulogize, while others integrate home movies and photographs Using archival material in this way, memory eternal becomes like a seance, a conjuring of our dead, VR working in what Shavano Flynn theorizes as a synecdical mode, making the absent present, standing in with parts for a whole. The VR world becomes 
kind of poetic digital Victorian morning jewelry, our Oculus passed around, still warm from our bodies holding, like a silver locket, holding a loved one's hair. For Damon Loring Baker, the last time I saw you was Facebook, of course, which you hated more than I did, though sometimes I pretended to be as enraged as you. But Damon, you expected more of the world than I do, and that is why I loved you. However, the poetics of the works of personal grieving are juxtaposed with works that engage in memory work in more somatic ways. Memory eternals reach as planetary. War and climate disaster haunt the world's spaces too. Works like Jolene Armstrong's Slava Ukraini harnesses VR's capacity for haptics, pinned to the viewer's visor to disorient, morphing images and immersive gunshot staccato heightens, fine tunes and focuses Emerson's own latent emotions. Memory eternal, springs eternal. Throughout the world, landscapes allude to Irish rites of spring and other cyclical symbols of return, including seeds, trees, leaves, and birds. Memory eternal offers this wisdom. Even in the face of relentless adversity, somatic, immersive experiences when embraced can offer renewal and emergence. As DH scholars, we've been thinking about this work in a number of intersecting frames, and this is what we wish to talk about in our discussion today. As IDOC and ELIT, in relation to immersive empathy, haptics, and interactivity, as an anarchive or living archive, as memory palace or lieu de mémoire, we invite you to check out our documentation on YouTube as well as on our webpage, and we look forward to discussing with you.